This is the War Room with PMAC presented by Chiefs Focus. On this show, PMAC and you provide you front office insight into crafting a championship caliber team for the Chiefs. They are identifying the right pieces to possibly meld together to lead to success this upcoming season. Welcome again to the War Room with PMAC. I am your host, you, that is PMAC. What's going on, man? What is up, bro? I was just, as you guys just saw me, I was just jamming to that new intro, man, and it was made by ours truly, our guy Thiz over here, man. I was enjoying it. Thank you so much for that intro. And anyway, I just want to say to everybody, thank you guys again for jumping on here on another episode of The War Room with PMAC presented by Cheese Focus. Um, already, it's already been a wild off season with free Absolutely. agent moves and also uh draft preparation. And, you know, this and I will continue to provide you guys, the audience, uh, front office insight to like the other needs going forward. Now, since we are about, uh, today's the 10th. So we're 15 days away, or let's just say two weeks and one day away from the NFL draft. And we are going to see what the Chiefs need to do next in order to get the team together to hopefully become the first team in NFL history to three peat. So. Absolutely. And this, um, this is an interesting, we're at an interesting uh, juncture because now we're not talking about, we're talking about we're doing something that has been done. That's number one. Number two, we're almost, following the motto of 2020 yeah. a little bit, but not completely, which no. I think is actually a good thing. So um, with that being said, let's just get the show started and we'll get into it. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Well, so we're going to start with the biggest news of the week that started last week. Cause a lot of you guys know, um, I didn't be, I wasn't on last week because I was doing my work of peer support training in Salina with my group, the Self Advocate Coalition of Kansas, uh, uh, Self Advocacy uh, Disability Rights Organization. Uh, once again, I have autism. And while I was going down there for our session, we got the news of Rasheed Rice's situation that happened in Dallas, Texas. As you guys all know, Rasheed was involved in a car crash in Dallas, his hometown, a six vehicle crash involving two speeding sports cars that led to a police search for Rice. And as you guys know, he was in a Lamborghini and either he was not driving or if he wasn't driving, the car was registered in his name or rented in his name, whatever. And he was racing alongside a Chevrolet Corvette. According to Rice's attorney, Royce West, both cars lost control, causing a multi- car accident on the US 75 Dallas Highway. And as you know, I went down to Dallas last month to watch my brother David Malcolm Magruder get married to uh, his uh, wife, uh, now Toya Marie Magruder. And our matter, as a matter of fact, on our way to Frisco, Texas, we took the US 75. And I remember looking at that and it was something in my mind, I was like, kind of like foreshadowing. Next thing you know, we see this news and I see that same highway. I was like, come on, Rasheed. And what's worse, according to the last Friday report from WFAA Channel 8 in Dallas, it was revealed it was not guns, as people were rumored to say it was in the car. It was, according to them, 11 grams of marijuana was discovered in the vehicle that Rice was in. If charged, that amount would lead to a Class B misdemeanor. In the state of Texas, which is punishable to about 180 days in jail and up to a $2,000 fine as a result. And as not just that, Roger hasn't gotten involved just yet. And this could lead to Rasheed Rice, based off of my sources from the people from the inside of Chiefs Focus, who speak to the folks on the inside in, the, in at one Arrowhead Drive. Rice could face a four to six game suspension. Well, let's just say he gets a six game suspension. He could appeal that. He could probably get four games or let's say it's four games. He could get it to from four to two. But as you can understand, he grew up in Texas in the Fort Worth area. He went to college in Dallas at SMU. Um, he was my guy that I talked about before he was drafted. As a matter of fact, when I was doing my comparisons, I compared him to Devontae Adams. And now that the Devontae Adams of the Chiefs could be facing suspension, 
how does that affect the team going forward? And I feel like with Rice facing that suspension, um, I posted this on my uh, X two days ago, which is this. The Chiefs could be having six wide receivers ready for week one, which is Hollywood Brown, uh, a running back wide receiver hybrid uh, from Wales, uh, the rugby player, Louis Aziz Ramit, who I think will compete with Justin Ross for the final roster spot. And if if Ross doesn't make it, I think Ross is still a a practice squad candidate. And also current veterans, Justin Watson, Kadarius Toney, and Sky Moore. But that last spot, the last six spot is opened for that rookie wide receiver who the Chiefs, I believe, will look into the top 100 of this year's draft. You know, like Lad McConkey from Georgia or A.D. Mitchell from Texas, Keon Coleman from Florida State, Xavier Ward, the, the fastest man in NFL combine history from texas jalen polk from washington either of those guys i think Mahomes would definitely make a start out of any of those five that i just named or any of the other guys that were not named so there's that so i want to know what's your thoughts about this rice thing i uh, how could i say this you know how you feel when obviously i'm not close to the situation i don't know rice i don't Same know I've never yeah. met him but, you know, he's coming off of this season where he's actually had, where you see the chemistry growing with he and Mahomes. And, uh, I, okay, here's where I actually saw it, where on that play where he broke off and went downfield and almost scored a touchdown off of it, and Mahomes found him downfield, right? So that was game, that, yeah. That told me right there that he understands that Mahomes wants you to just keep running. You know what I mean? Just keep running. And he broke off of his route because he saw something. And so he took advantage of it. And so when I see that, it tells me that, hey, this guy gets it. Or he's starting to get it. You know what I mean? And so um, him getting it tells me that, oh, so it's time to go now. And so he never looked back from that point. I also thought that Andy Reid doesn't really play rookies like that. Okay. Right. Unless they're special. He's special. He can be special. I, do I think he's Justin Jefferson? Absolutely not. But does no. can he can he make it to a point where he's that? I don't see why not. So yeah. to to deal to hear him going back home because essentially that's his home. Yeah. Um, and, and he was working out with Mahomes and Hollywood Brown before yeah, all that too. Which is something that, which is something that I was applauding uh, to hear yeah. him going down there and then in his spare time, you know, racing down the street with some rented vehicles. No one ever thinks anything bad's going to happen ever. Right. Okay. So I understand what he thought or what he might've thought, but it sucks to hear. But he's he's a young kid. He, yeah. Give him a break. He, we've all look. We've all been there. I've I've yeah. uh, I've been. I'm I'm. I like speed. Probably more than I care to admit. And I don't I've care been, what you did tell me, bro. I'm like, wow, I, yeah, man. <laughs> I've, I've been racing down. I've raced down the street many, many times, and 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 fortunately for me, it never ended the way it ended for it, him. And right. fortunately for him, it didn't end the way it ended for another gentleman in Las Vegas. So, I'm yeah, grateful. and that's what we was hoping I'm, and thankful for. That didn't end up just like that. Yeah, that was very right grateful situation. for that. Man, this will be a very expensive lesson to learn. But hey, as long as the lesson gets learned, that's all that matters. Absolutely. And speaking about that, Dallas is known for their, well, I think everywhere, because we all seen the movie Fast and the Furious and everything else like that. But Texas, especially in Dallas area, they get serious with the racing thing down there. Because I remember um, around, and I think I told you this story before, it was the 2019-2020 season. This was like a week before our divisional round game against the Texans with all that historical thing happening. I remember when we first got into Dallas, and I think that was also the same US 75 coming from you know Oklahoma into Texas, and I remember these cars, the same style cars, Lamborghini, and I think it was a, also a Chevrolet, but I think it was more of a Chevrolet, Chevrolet Camaro, like the Bumblebee car from uh, Transformers. And these cars had their light front lights off, and 
me, my mom and my sister were in the car and just getting into Dallas. And next thing you know, these lights turn off and you hear vroom, 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 and everybody jumping in the car and they just take off from zero to a hundred real quick. Like they already down the road. And I'm like, wow, this y'all get crazy down here, man. And just to see this situation happen where she was like, don't bite the bait, man. Like, I understand this is where you're from and all this other stuff, but don't forget you're the number one wide receiver for the Kansas city chiefs. And on top of that, your team, including you, along with your number one, your quarterback one, has a target on his back. As a matter of fact, when you hear Stefan Diggs, who got traded to the Texans also during that week, and also Deontay Johnson, their team saying anybody but the Chiefs who you want to get traded to, that should tell you something, that we should watch our backs. We're the villains, and they're going to try to make us bad into anything else. So that's all about that part. And, you know, I hope Rasheed learns his lesson. I think he has. And, you know, just it's his first offense and he's young. And that's what I'm saying. But at the same time, I'm saying don't give them a reason to talk bad about you or use it against you. So that's just all I'm coming from. Also, for those that might be listening, him being young is not an excuse. It is, yeah. but it is a fact. And so um, we're allowed to make mistakes. And, uh, yeah. It, it, he made a mistake and fortunately fortunately no one had to pay with their lives and so as we move on uh Rashi is our first news that's news to me segment and uh what's our next one man and in other news and finally finally the chiefs have finally got their backup quarterback carson wentz has agreed to a one year 3 million dollar contract with the chiefs Wentz is the former number two overall pick in the 2016 draft. He joins his fifth team in five years to back up Mahomes. He spent last season with the Rams and led the Rams to a victory in the final game in his only start. Wentz looked poised for stardom when he was first drafted by the Eagles. He was a leading MVP candidate, threw for 3,200 yards, 33 touchdown passes, seven interceptions while leading the Eagles to a 11 and two record in 2017 then suffered a season-ending knee injury in Week 14, and then the Eagles went on to win the Super Super Bowl 52 without him with former Chiefs quarter, backup quarterback Nick Foles at the time. That's the kind of roller coaster career we know Winston have had, but when he, he showed so much promise, even signing a four-year, $128 million contract extension in 2019 before suffering a lot of injuries and having inconsistent play, which set him on like a, a journeyman's career path, you know? So he's played these last three years with the Colts, the Commanders, and lastly with the Rams. But I feel like with the Chiefs, he'll return back to his roots where he first started. And, and in 2017, he the Eagles were coached by our guy, Doug E.P., Doug Peterson, who played under Andy Reid and then went on to serve as his office of coordinator with the Chiefs from 2013 to 2015. And, you know, as I mentioned, Foles, he was the backup quarterback in 2016 behind Alex Smith. And then the next year would go and back up Carson Wentz and then help the Eagles lead them to the Super Bowl when Wentz went out with the injury. As a matter of fact, I remember writing an article last year in March of 2023 for Chiefs Focus. When we were searching for our quarterback, it was called, you know, three backup options to, you know, come in as competition for Shane Bouchelle and Chris Ola Duncan, who is now our quarterback three. And I remember saying this in my quote, Doug Peterson coached Wentz during uh, their time together with the Eagles. So signing with a team like the Chiefs that he's familiar with, including a quarterback friendly scheme led by Peterson's uh, mentor, Andy Reid, would make a ton of sense. And finally, we got that because this guy would be a solid backup if Mahomes were to ever miss time for whatever. I also think he's a massive upgrade over what we have from Blaine Gabbard, even over Chad Henney and Matt Moore, in my opinion. And if you remember last year, too, he led the Rams to a win over the Niners in Week 18. And if they had won that game, if they didn't win that game, they wouldn't have been in the playoffs. But for him to win that game without Matthew Stafford, says a lot and you got to give Wentz credit for that and when you look at his numbers compared to all the backup quarterbacks with the Chiefs I took Matt Moore's Chief stats Henny's Chief stats and um and uh I believe no 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 I took all Henny's Moore's and Gabbard's career stats not with the Chiefs but all total stats they combine for a 76 pass rating. When you compare that with Carson Wentz, an 89.2, almost 90 passer rating, and 90 is the 
average for a quarterback to say that you're good. And for Carson Wentz to be close to that, that's the thing that makes me happy to have him. You know, he's still got the arm. You know, there's still some moments with his decision making, but I feel like working with Andy, we, he'll fix that. And because he's big and he has the ability to extend plays with his legs, he's able to convert first downs on quarterback sneaks. Some of homes don't have to. So I'm happy with that. What's your thoughts about Carson? Because, um, well, uh, I mean, honestly, I've, I, I've, I liked Carson. I don't want to say when he got drafted, but eh, I liked him better than I liked golf at the time. And then as he started growing in his progressions and in, in his natural, in his natural progression with, uh, with one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, Dougie P. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, he was, he was walking it to him. Like Shannon Sharp always just said, you know, Shannon Sharp coined that term, walk it to him, went. And um walk the two and winch. And so uh you know, I had until that injury, I think he was I think he was doing amazing until that injury, and then next thing I know, the injury happened and he was never the same. Uh the rest is history, as it were. Uh he got the he got his deal done in Philadelphia, and then they ended up getting rid of him because he had some characters or character concerns at the time. Yeah. And so they also had to move off of him because of the money. And so of course he I think he went the route of uh another former quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, Donovan McNabb. Did he get sent to the to the to Washington? Yes he did. He yeah, did. So both of them went to Washington. He went to Washington and so did McNabb. So he kind of went that same yeah. route. And uh, and he's just never been the same as that 2017 season. Um, yeah. So now he's he lands in Kansas City, which is out always. Uh, I understand that he wants to play, and he wasn't horrible with the Indianapolis Colts. Okay, he just no. it just didn't work out there. He's not going to get as many playing opportunities in Kansas City, but no. as long as he's able to stay ready, not get ready. But stay ready. Stay ready. He could absolutely have a career as a backup in Kansas City, a solid career, and play almost as long as he wants to. <laughs> as long as he's willing to put in the work and do what do what they tell him to do, and not mess up when when your number is called. Because we know Andy Reid infamously rests the starters. In week 17, 18, what, what have you, that last game of the season. And uh, so, with that being said, Wentz has been signed to Kansas City, and hopefully for him, it works out well. What's our next? Yes, sir. What's our next? All one? right. <clears throat> well, I said in the first ever episode of The War Room uh, that he should test the market, but I wasn't going to be surprised if this move happened that just happened with him happened either and that is the Chiefs re-signing Clyde Edwards Elaire to a one-year deal according to e- e- uh, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport um CEH drew very interest very little interest in free agency after uh setting career lows with lat- uh, with 223 rushing yards and uh, 3.2 yards per carry last season he'll be no higher than a number 2 on the Chiefs depth chart behind Isaiah Pacheco but as you saw Health really played a big role in his improvement last year. And when it was in the passing game, CEA showed uh, more explosiveness and strength this year while being, you know, a valuable backup for the Chiefs. He needs to develop more consistency and versatility as a receiver to carve out a bigger role in 2024. Um, But however, CEH's signing does not preclude the Chiefs from drafting a running back, but it doesn't give them the flexibility to not have to choose one out of need. As much as I did not think Clyde was coming back, I honestly yeah. had, I mean, given the circumstances behind his whole career in Kansas City, I didn't think he wanted to come back. I didn't think yeah, I didn't think he would have the opportunity to come back. But, right. you know, he knows the system. He says, yes. in fact, I read an article um or maybe I had heard about it somewhere 
where he says he feels comfortable here. This is where he cut his teeth. And so, yeah. and so to hear that, that's a great thing. It also speaks to the um, acumen of Andy Reid. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, I'm shocked, super shocked that he's back. But he serves his purpose and he serves it well. And I do agree with you that this doesn't preclude them from drafting another running back or even or even not drafting one and picking one up off the of UDFA, depending on who falls, who doesn't. But yeah. um, this move is purely a depth move, so I'd have no issue with it. Yes, yes. Our Glad. next bit of news. And last, last but week. not least. Yeah. And I just got to say this, too. This one, it was also another guy who I said who should have tested Mark and who I thought if he'd gone to a new team, he'd been a, a comp pick. But I did also say if they do bring him back, it's because of what happened with Charles Amonahue. And that's none other than Mike Dana, who the Chiefs brought back on a three-year, $24 million deal. This makes Mike Dana the first beach draft pick to get a long-term deal with the Chiefs in the beach era. That's a big deal. And uh, Claudio, you know, he's he was a first round pick, probably the first first round pick in the Beach era. He didn't get a long term deal, just a one year deal, but that's a big thing. But for Dana, he was a former fifth round pick who became a starter after the Chiefs let uh, Frank Clark go. He had his most productive season of his career last season: uh, fifty tackles, six and a half sacks. Uh, he started all of the four uh, playoff games, including the uh, win against the Niners in the Super Bowl. Since Amani, he suffered his torn ACL from the AFC Championship game. Uh, that showed how much important Dana was to the team going forward and the suspension of Amani who also took away actually voided some future guarantees for him as well because of those six games you know so that would also give the Chiefs an out on his contract if they wanted to go that direction which is going to be about seven million dollars in base salary this year for Amani Hugh. but the team also used last year's first round selection on Felix A. D.K. Uzama but, you know, the local product didn't play much as a rookie. But with Carl Loftus, Dana, Amanahu, who we hope to see back before the postseason, and uh, Andy D.K. Uzama and B.J. Thompson, the Chiefs are nearly set to run it back at DN this upcoming year. With that, I am I, – I, first of all, I found it super shocking when I yeah. realized the information that Dana is the first – person Veach draft pick to get a long term deal. Yeah. Veach plays I I'm surprised, but Veach plays his, his uh cards close to the chest. And yeah. uh and that's okay. He, everybody does it the way they want to, but he signs a lot of one year deals and, and uh to see that and this is like I said, like you said, this is a Veach draft pick. He like Chris Jones got a long term deal but he wasn't picked by Veach so forth and so on. So um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. We know what Veach is. Veach is amazing. From the outside looking in, though, it makes you wonder. It, that doesn't sound good from the outside looking in. However, right. either way, doesn't matter if it sounds good or not. It has resulted to being in the AFC championship game every single year. We, you know, the Chiefs are the – Chicago Bulls of the NFL. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Yes, keep sir. So um, Dana is signed to a three-year deal, and mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much the end of the news. Yes, sir. That's news to me segment. And now, um, in the interest of time, we will move forward to uh, – talking about our the Chiefs draft needs and we'll, yes. we'll list them from one to five. All right, all right, thank you. So with that being said, in this segment too, we're gonna talk about the now after these you know signings of Chris Jones coming back, Dana, Tranquil, CEH and all these other guys, uh Veach still needs to address the needs that have not been addressed yet. Like, for example, we need to find somebody who's going to replace a uh, Legereus Sneed. We need to find somebody who's going to replace Donovan Smith if the Chiefs don't bring him back. you got Rasheed Rice's uh, situation. Also, you've also been saying a wide receiver three is also needed. So 
with that being said, I took the time to uh, base my research on this, to bring this topic here based off of missing snaps. And I remember Pro Football Focus did the little segment before like a decade ago called Missing Snaps of like what teams need. And that's where the idea came from. So when I look at the missing snaps from Pro Football Reference, this would let me to name the five most important positions that the Chiefs need to address now going into this draft. And we'll start with one of the three most important positions in all of football, and that is the left tackle position. Donovan Smith, you all know, he did his thing with us last year, but he's currently unsigned, and Jawan Taylor will be back at right tackle, but the Chiefs will definitely be looking in the top 100 for more talent and bodies on the, at that offensive tackle position. And also got to take into consideration, I believe Lucas Niang is also on the final year of his rookie deal as well. That's why you got to take that into consideration. Protecting the quarterback is very important to NFL success with such a premium placed on keeping the quarterback out of harm's way. It is no surprise that teams in the past have made it a priority to draft offensive tackles. We all know Wayne Morris, he did very well, got a uh, pro football focus, all rookie team left tackle, but it was only in those four games. And if we seen a lot of those other games, we probably would have seen more of the struggles, which leads me to believe that he does show that he can do well at left tackle, but I think he's more of a right tackle when I saw his film from Oklahoma. And that's why I feel like this is a major need, especially if Donovan doesn't resign. So stabilizing this position will lead to balance to help the rushing attack and also allow Mahomes more time to work through his progressions. And I've heard, especially according to Daniel Jeremiah, that in other scouts like Matt Miller, there could be about 10 to 11 guys that include a bunch of day one starters that could be selected in the first three rounds or first two rounds of this draft, I believe. So it makes a good time for the Chiefs to hit the refresh button and get a guy who can immediately come in and protect my home. So just a list of options here. There's day one options. You know, Olo Fashanu from Penn State. Uh, there's uh, Troy uh, Fatanu from Washington. Uh, or Marius Mims from Georgia, or, you know, Kingsley Somiata from BYU, D day two options. Patrick Paul from Houston. Uh, Kyron uh, Majidi from Yale. And um, from day three options, there's Javon Foster from Mizzou, who I talked about in the last episode. And then there's also a late round option, Walter Rouse from Oklahoma. This guy, uh, he's a beast. And for a guy who has long length arms, almost 35 inch arms playing at Oklahoma, that's another guy that everybody should keep their eyes on. So number two. Cornerback. Well, well let's, oh, 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 no, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, go about ahead. This left tackle thing. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, you're good. Uh, the thing about left tackle is, first of all, we know Patrick Mahomes is the number one priority here. Yeah. And while last season was tumultuous, you know, it was very tumultuous for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> for everybody. And so, um, uh, some people would have issue bringing back Donovan Smith. Me, not so much. Donovan me, Smith me neither. able to turn the corner in the playoffs. And while there were still issues, uh, they were able to turn the corner, and I thought that was amazing. And bringing in, let's say, let's say, I, I do not disagree with you at all. I do think that is the number one goal. If you got 80, if you, hold on, if you came into $500 million, you know what? Let me let me repair it, compare it to this. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie Brewster's Millions, where uh, Richard where Pryor Richard Pryor comes into you grew up on that movie. He, he comes into some money and he has to spend it in thirty days. But the first thing he and he decided to take the challenge, and the first thing he did was get the security guards from that building and he paid them all, and then he went to the bank or. It's either he went to the bank and then he got the the, the security guards, your left tackles, your uh, your tackles, your guards, your center. They're your security guards for your quarterback. Yeah. I just can't. The Chiefs just came into five hundred million dollars in Patrick Mahomes, five hundred million dollars. The first thing you need to do is figure out how to protect your five hundred million dollars. And so, if you could find a guy instead of having to, um. Go find a makeshift guy to come in every so often. Yeah, you it's better to get them cost efficiently in the draft, 
than going to have to find a Donovan Smith every single year. Uh, yeah. Also, you can always bring back Donovan Smith. You can draft these guys. Like yeah, draft, still bring them back. You can draft a second round guy, like you said, or a third round guy. Let them, you know, uh, develop and bring back Donovan Smith. And for the first part of the season, and if you see something good happening, you know, start weaving them in a little bit because this is not yeah. just for this next year. And and to be fair, let's not get caught up in the three P. This is for moving forward in general. We yes. want to be we want to be the team of the decade, and we want to yes. be the team to beat. We want to get that seven, eight rings. So if we don't get it this year, you know, you can always do it next year. But that's all on the number two. Our left tackle yes. is number one. Our number two is? Cornerback. Like I said in the last episode, Sneed has been our blue chip guy, and he leaves the organization with two, two championship rings to the Titans. The Chiefs will need to add one more cornerback to a room that is in need of some depth in terms of competition next to all pro corner Trent McDuffie. There are options behind McDuffie like Jalen Watson and Joshua Williams. All three are from the 2022 draft. Watson and Williams could have an opportunity to elevate roles, including Shamari Connor, who could be sharing nickel duties with McDuffie. But it will be a critical summer for Watson Williams as well as Eco Boydo. Nazi J- Johnson returning from injury, but if you look at the Chiefs website or just what their post was when he signed his exclusive rights free agent deal, he's listed as a safety. And Nick Jones, those guys are looking to establish themselves this coming summer. The Chiefs need to find another starter level cornerback opposite McDuffie before the season begins. Also, depth is always needed in case of injury. And it should not be any surprise to anyone to see the Chiefs look to add more depth to the secondary, even with the roster full of depth options of players, even those players I just named. They're good enough, in my opinion, that they could start in the NFL. But there are about 15 corners with the chance to go through the first three rounds, which should give the Chiefs a good chance to grab one of them. Like day one options, Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama. Um or day two options, my guy, uh, Kyrie Jackson from Oregon. There's Cam Hart from Notre Dame. TJ Tampa, who's one of the best defensive backs from the Big 12 at, from Iowa State. Jarian Jones from um, Florida State. This guy is a beast. I'm going to talk about him a little later in the show. Uh, day three options, there's Elijah Jones from Boston College. Uh, this guy from uh, Mississippi State, uh, Damaria Khan Richardson. And then there's also Ryan Watson. The thing about Ryan Watson, bro, as a day three option, he could be like – he's like a better Jalen Watson, in my opinion, because he's 6'3", 205 pounds, and he has these 36-inch arms. That's like a cross between Sean Smith, who the Chiefs had, and like Brandon Browner from the Seahawks. And those are the type of guys I feel like the Chiefs need to look for, especially to put fear in teams. So – Honestly, honestly, uh, I would have uh, – part of me wants to put this position a little bit further down the list. Uh, okay. But I understand your thought concept here. And the reason I understand it is because you're only as strong as your weakest link. And yeah. when you talk about having Jalen uh, uh, Watson, who has – been good. He's been productive yeah. where he's been, right? But hey, since week nine, yeah, yeah, Last absolutely. Yeah, and he's shown up in in very very tight spots sometimes. Um, but though I think I think you can upgrade at that position at in the draft. Um, and with that being said, I absolutely believe that you need to find the next playmaker so you can have some shutdown corners. Uh, yes. You had that last season, and you see what it brought you. It was able to give your defensive line plenty of time to get to the quarterback, and it worked out well, especially as you um, – and, and if you can find a – I don't want to say you can find a pick specialist because I, I don't want them to go rogue or maverick, as it were, 
and decide they want to go get picks instead of playing the ball. But if you can find a way to get Mahomes back the ball, yeah, it's only going to work better for you. So um, I do believe that with uh, with our safety Brian Brian Cook. Brian Brian Cook coming back off of injury. Um, yeah. I do think you need, you can you can help him out by upgrading this position. Let's move yeah. on to our next position. Yes, sir. And of course, it's one of the most important positions that everybody's been talking about: a wide receiver. Now, with the Rice news, the Chiefs really need to have a plan in place to get their guy that would not only be a good one to punch to Rice, but another weapon for Patrick Mahomes. Although wide receiver threes will align in the slot. Some teams will move their top receivers around to exploit favorable matchups against like a nickel corner, like Kelsey, for example, even though he's a tight end, people call him wide receiver one for the Chiefs. The Chiefs move him around. So as a result, the job description for this guy for who could come in as wide receiver three to work his way up to wide receiver one is team specific, which is to count on that sub pass catcher to come in, make plays when the defense makes a concerted effort to snuff out wide receiver one. Devontae Adams is a great example. He started off first three, four seasons as a wide receiver three before now becoming one of the 10 top five best wide receivers in the game today. The team needs a receiver with the ability and the mentality that he could do everything. He can give you the big play ability down the field, but also he can do a lot of dirt work on third down and in the red zone. And he would give Mahomes a lot of free yards after the catch. You know, Hollywood Brown has yet to showcase his reliability as a number one, making wide receiver very important here. Uh, the potential suspension of Rice, as well as the limited skill sets of Kadarius Tony, Justin Watson, and Sky Moore leaves Beach and company, needing at least one more, if not more, wide receivers with more well-rounded skills. Kadarius Tony could move up the depth chart and take over as the returner if McCall Harmon doesn't return, including the possible with Rice's suspension. And we all know day one options, A.D. Mitchell, his teammate, Xavier Worthy. There's Lad McConkey from Georgia, who people say is like Garrett Wilson, but he kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Brian, uh, no, Brandon Cooks, who but he could like be more productive. Then there's also day two options. Our guy, Xavier Leggett. There's Keon Coleman, who could be a day one, day two option. There's also Malachi Corley, who I think is one of the best receivers in this draft class uh, coming from Western Kentucky. There's day three options, Luke McCaffrey, and there's also Malik Washington from Virginia. Nobody's going to disagree with you when it comes to wide receiver. <laughs> Nobody's going to disagree with you on that. Um, even though uh, we saw some flashes from uh, Rashi, who could be very well could be number one, uh, WR1 if he plays his cards right. Um, yeah. I'm, we're not going to disagree on that. Uh, do I think is uh, originally when I started, when the season started, I thought that might be uh, need number one. But as I've calmed down a little bit and got forward towards the, you know, towards this to this point. There's so many good receivers in this draft that deep class. Yeah, it's a huge, it's an immensely deep class. And yes, if you could find a guy that, um, that gets better with Mahomes, especially in a, on a rookie contract, that's going to be to your advantage. And being able to find guys like Hollywood Brown is always a good thing for one year, uh, incentive laden deal. So with that being said, I definitely agree with you, and I actually don't disagree with where you put the severity of it. Number three, with the left tackle being number one, I absolutely agree with you. Thank you. Let's move on to number four. All right, and we were talking about Brian Cook. I feel like this is why I feel like this position is important as well. Free safety, man. I've been banking on saying the Chiefs need a free safety since last year. I thought Jordan Battle would have been that perfect guy. As a matter of fact, Jordan Battle was all rookie team, not just PFF, but Pro Football Writers Association, all rookie team safety. I wanted the Chiefs to get him so bad. The Chiefs lost Mike Edwards to the Bills with Brian Cook expected to return from his ankle injury to start free, start at free safety with Justin Reed returning on a contract year 
to start at strong safety. The Chiefs have their starters for now, but behind them there's Deion Bush, who looms as a reliable, imposing defender who can play the deep middle. You saw get the interception off of Lamar Jackson in the AFC Championship game. You got Shamar, who's more your traditional do-it-all safety, free safety, strong safety in the slot, split out as a corner, and even line up as a defensive lineman. Your Swiss Army knife at the safety position. Who adds depth behind Cook? Both are decent options, but adding another safety who is versatile enough to play both roles would be very valuable. So don't be surprised if the Chiefs will be most likely looking to add another talented safety to compete for the third safety role behind Connor against Connor and Bush behind Reed and cook with the 32nd overall pick or beyond that. So there's day one options. Uh, this was one of JP's favorites. Uh, our guy from chiefs focus, uh, Tyler Newbin from Minnesota. I like Newbin. He's a beast. He could play. He's that example of the guy who could play both roles, kind of like a Harrison Smith, type of guy. Uh, there's Javon ba- uh, Ballard from Georgia. There's also his teammate, Tyke Smith from Georgia. There's a guy from QB once alma mater, uh, uh, that Dorian Taylor Demerson from Texas tech. There's Cole Bishop from Utah. And there's also day three options, a former teammate of McDuffie's Dominic Hampton from Washington. There's James Williams, who is also Quentin's favorite from the U Miami. And there's another Texas tech guy, Tyler Owens, uh, those are the options that you guys should look at the free safety position or just the safety position for the Chiefs since we do cover two. For me, when it comes to different positions, I am here for uh, hybrid roles. Like you already got, especially you already got your your positions, and when you got these guys coming in drafted, you have the opportunity now to. Uh, get them in hybrid roles and be able to put them at a certain place in a certain pinch because football teams know who they're dealing with, the personnel they're dealing with, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're able to put this person in and they can play both role, roles, like let's say a linebacker slash corner. Uh, you can't do a linebacker slash corner. Let's do a linebacker slash lineman. You mm-hmm. can throw things at the defense that they can't see coming especially if if it's the first game playing, you know what I mean? And, and we know who Spags is. Spags is a guy who doesn't, who doesn't um, bend to just tradition. Like, he will switch it up. He will absolutely throw you a few wild cards in there. So um, for anybody who plays Uno, he'll throw you a few wild draw fours in there. So make sure you get some guys that are able to do that for Spags. And um, with that being said, last one, last number five. All right. And last but not least, uh, I think this position is important because, as you guys know, we got back, got back Drew Tranquil. But um, this role is very important next to the Drew Tranquil role after we lost Willie Gay, which is linebacker. Or, in other words, the Will Sam linebacker type of role, a guy who also can – learn to play the inside position to get the green dot one day. So Willie Gay left the free agency signing with the Saints. Tranquil is back. Chanel is ready to take over the Sam role, leaving a hole at the Will role if Tranquil is still the backup inside linebacker behind Nick Bolton. However, Willie Gay's departure leaves a major void, but the salary cap will make it made it difficult for the Chiefs to try to bring him back when they signed uh, Chris Jones and made the decision between Tranquil and then they still had the situation with Snead. But, you know, getting somebody for him is very important because Spag's defense have tra- Spag's defenses have traditionally featured a versatile off the ball linebacker, you know, like Curtis Lofton or let's say Antonio Pierce. Even though the Chiefs are a 4-3 base scheme, Spag's scheme run most off of the snaps of out of the nickel formations, they only have two linebackers on the field, as we all know. Chanel has shown the talent to be that versatile off the ball piece, but he's still more like, as you said, that linebacker defensive line hybrid to me. So expect the Chiefs to target some of the linebackers in this year's draft that have the versatility to play the off ball linebacker on early downs and then put their hand in the dirt and rush the passer on the edge and passing passing down situations. So like day one options, Peyton Wilson from uh, North Carolina State. I think this is the best linebacker in this draft class. He is a beast, bro. Like, he reminds me of Luke Keekley for real, the way he plays on the field, but faster. There's also 
day two options, or this guy could be a day one, day two option. Junior Colson from Michigan. There's also Cedric Gray from North Carolina. Day three options, our guy I mentioned on the last episode, Traven Wallace from Kentucky. There's Curtis Jacobs from Penn State, and there's also a teammate of uh, McDuffie's, Edie Ola Oshoyo from Washington, who was one of the most athletic athletic linebackers from the combine. He ran a good 40, put up a good vertical jump and everything else like that. Uh, with the linebackers, yes, I do agree. Um, Leo Chanel will be moving into that every every down or most down linebacker now that we don't have Willie Gay anymore. Cool. Um, and then you got Drew. He'll be playing more. And so that leaves a void with your number three. And uh, Shamari Connor, he's got the hybrid role, but – you want him to continue to play that hybrid role. That way you can keep everybody fresh, including him. Um, nickel, yeah. nickel, nickel corner, hybrid role, linebacker. And then you don't want to be put in a position where you have to play him at linebacker completely, i.e. Um, Dirty Dan playing linebacker. <laughs> this is disaster. Uh, and and you, I, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't a fan of Dirty Dan playing linebacker. No. Um, but it's able to get these guys in positions where they are best suited because we saw what Dirty Dan thrived at. We saw yeah. what, and it just wasn't linebacker. It was the same. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I think he was better at linebacker than he was as a deep safety because, God, he got burned. It was like no, 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 no. on the field. I don't disagree with you there. I don't disagree with you, but he, he didn't need to be the, the second safety. He needed to be more in the nickel or the dime. And anytime he could have help for himself, that's what he needed. But yeah. being a linebacker, I did not like it. And then when he was the second, cause, oh, man, now you're bringing up bad memories. Because <laughs> I, I remember, I remember the Honey help. Badger being – Oh man, I, I remember. <laughs> oh, bad memories, bad memories. But uh, get your shit oh, together, Dan. <laughs> but when, I remember that man. <laughs> but when Dirty Dan was put in the correct positions, that that um, his skill set required, he was good. Yeah. Um, in the interest of time, we're gonna move forward because we're at forty-seven minutes right now. So. Now it's time for everybody's favorite um, everybody's favorite segment, P Max mock draft, and this is seven point oh. That's right. And this time we are going to do the full seven round mock this time, people. And the next time you see us, we're gonna do that again. But this time we'll do really good research on this one where I feel like realistically we're gonna select where we think the, who the Chiefs are going to get. So hey. This, Let's do. I think this was there was a little bit of a, a break off. Let's just do four rounds this time. Okay, let's or let's just do that. And so that, yeah, that way that way next week we can do a full seven round, and then we move um, further down the list um, that way. Because what is it? How many days we got to the draft after that? What we got two shows before the draft? Yeah, two shows after, after this show. We got two shows for the draft. And I think having two seven round mock drafts, pretty decent. So let's do yeah, yeah. a four round mock, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Well, actually, folks, that was actually my original plan, but this put on the uh, seven, three extra guys. But now nah, I'm just messing with you. But nah, the four round thing is a great idea because this idea also came from a uh, Chad Reuter. Chad Reuter, you guys should read his stuff from NFL.com. Uh, he gives you some insightful stuff. Some people might not like the mocks he gives, but there's some reasons why I think this guy studies like each team schemes and like why the certain players he selects should go there, and it makes a lot of sense. So with that being said, as part of our four round mock. I'm going to start with the number 32 overall pick in the Chiefs select are Marius Mims, the offensive tackle from Georgia. I mean, despite still sitting there at 32, Brett Beach not only gets a premium player, but a steal. The 6'7", 340-pound Mims seems like a suitable option anywhere he goes. And if the league allows him to go to the Chiefs, 
y'all in trouble for real, man. His hand placement and punch is some of the most violent you could find in the draft with his 11 one fourth inch arms, as you can see here, man, and 36 inch. Actually, let me say that again 11 inch hands, 36 inch arms. He has very good athletic base and vertical sets, including the ability to stay square to the line of scrimmage and pass protection until the last possible moment, preventing not, you know rushers from rarely getting to him or having a two-way go to the inside like Joe Thomas did coming out of Wisconsin. And that's one of the players I'll see him. He's like a 6'7", 340 Joe Thomas. When rushers are able to – Counter inside, Mim seemingly transitions to a power step, as you see on this play here, cut and watch down his man due to his mental processing, movement skills, and the size and the length. Where he does struggle with his, his you know, pass rush stunts. More experience in coaching, let's say from Andy Heck, will help refine his, him in the next few years. He was more of a right tackle, but there's potential for him to move to the left side and tap into his athleticism to protect the blind side. With Donovan Smith's future is uncertain, Mims could be a day one starter that could help protect Mahomes at left tackle in year one. His size strength would be a healthy complement to what Joe Tooney brings to the left side of the office line and would be a smooth transition from what the team used with Donovan Smith and Wayne Morris off the left side. And I really would love Mims. I like Mims. Um, First of all, just just look at this this play where he gets out in space. Yeah, I, I like the idea of him being able to get out hands. In, yes, him being able to get out in space, find a guy and roll him over. And uh, also, when I see him block, the first thing I want to say is, "This is why I'm hot." So, um, and that's and you know what I'm talking about, Mims. Um, <laughs> this but, is why I'm hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I don't see um, a Marius Mims falling to us. I don't see it. Yeah. But if the we league, have to move up. If the league allows him to fall to 32, that's going to be a problem for them. Yeah. Because like you said, I, I, and working alongside Joe Tooney, I think Joe Tooney can help him refine some things. Of course, Andy Heck, we already know about him. So – I definitely agree with everything you said. This, of course, this is a PMAC approved pick. So let's move on to our number 64 pick. All right. And of course, a lot of fans have been bringing this guy up. And before I, okay, after I did my mock and selected this guy here, of course, there was what happened on the news similar to a Rasheed Rice situation. But this man got caught with his DUI. But it still doesn't matter to me because I feel like he has told teams about his situation, but it could hurt his stock. But regardless, I still selected Tavondre Sweat, the defensive tackle from Texas. The Chiefs did their part re-signing Derek Nottie, Mike Pinnell, and Tershawn Turk Wharton, but they will be gone in a year. The 2023 first-team All-American from the Texas Longhorns, Tavondre Sweat, offers some position versatility on the defensive line and he has flashed impressive quickness to disrupt to disrupt for such being a big guy 6'3 363 pounds a guy that is 363 pounds but moves like a freaking edge rusher like it's like Micah Parsons if he was 360 three pounds, but players that are that big and quick and disruptive and moves like a DN rushing from the edge for, for his size can find time playing early on the field. And the addition of sweat will lighten the low for Derek Nottie, who plays the high majority of snaps at nose tackle. He possess, I mean, sweat possesses a solid burst, initial burst, violent pair of hands while being a very good run defender who could come in and play the one technique or the nose tackle and relief and Nottie. He has the goods to anchor this group next to Chris Jones for a long time. And he, to me, is like a cross between Damus Nax Harrison and Don Tari Poe. Um, as we, like we all know, he got into trouble. But as you guys remember, Willie Gay got into trouble for something similar, you know, where there was red flags with him. But he was still selected in the second round. And you saw what happened with him. So that's why I'm not really sweating it as much. As a matter of fact, after he had his situation, he went to go visit the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I like, I like, I like him a lot. Um, and then it, it makes me feel like the Chiefs are actually finally building around Chris Jones. 
Yes. I feel like they allowed Chris Jones to be on an island. Um, yeah, they tried to get guys that could play inside and out, but this is a guy right here that could be uh, – that could, that you – because I know we don't have a typical uh, setup where it's three four four three. We play hybrids all the time. Mm-hmm. Tavondre he moves like a D line, like a D, D bro. It's so crazy at three sixty three, and he moves. You see the way he uses his hands just to try to like. I'm like, dude, and that's the crazy part. Like, if he he him learning for Chris Jones is going to be amazing. Watch not out in the field. As a matter of fact, Montague was trying to recruit him, yeah. and I remember seeing Chris Jones uh, tweet having a big eye emoji like. I'm like, yeah, he's probably talking to Beach about him right now. I'm like, uh oh. And let him let him be more versatile. He could end up taking the Chris Jones role at when I say taking, I mean like being able to move inside and outside. I don't see it him happening. Chris could be doing that to people. Oh my god. Right. I don't see it happening. But if he wants to go to the next level, I think that's the that's the move that he's gonna make. Obviously he's gotta get into the NFL and he's gotta make his waves in the NFL. But I do love this pick to go alongside Chris Jones. Now let's move on to pick number three, pick number 94 in the NFL draft. Yes, sir. And with that pick, the Chiefs select Jarian Jones, cornerback from Florida State. He is one of the best cornerbacks coming out in 2024, in my opinion. And there not, might not be a more desperate need at this pick for the Chiefs after losing LeJarrius Sneed via trade. Jarian Jones is a gifted athlete who can guard receivers outside or in the slot. And Jones is at the average size for a cornerback at six feet tall, but he's well built. He's extremely feisty. He's like six feet tall, Jalen Ramsey. But oh, there's a comparison I'll give you though. But he is feisty when he's challenging the catch. He is as talented and confident and has ball skills to compete with Shamari Connor for the slot cornerback reps. He, when I say he's like six feet tall, Jalen Ramsey, I'll take it a step further. He reminds me of 2023 Defensive Player of the Year uh, candidate, cornerback Deron Bland from the Cowboys. Both are the similar size. Both were effective on the outside and in the slot with those ball skills. You saw what Deron Bland did. I'm saying that to say that if you select Jones, he could be like that for us. And you could push McDuffie on the outside. And you've got guys who reverse the play outside and inside. I really think this is what I mean by getting those cornerbacks because we can get more picks. And he might struggle with tight hips and inconsistent footwork. So he may need time this offseason to work on those aspects before playing extensively, but Jones has the coverage ability to earn playing time early with the Chiefs. I like him opposite McDuffie. Yeah. I like him specifically because he's going to be opposite McDuffie. He's got the long arms. He has recovery speed. I like this pick. You get him at a value because he's in the third round. I like the pick a lot. Yeah. And that's simple and plain. I like this pick. Period. Thank so you. let's move let's move on to this one. The next one. Uh pick yes, number one thirty one in the NFL draft. All right. And our last pick for this uh four round mock draft of the uh point uh seven oh mock draft from PMAC. At one thirty one, the Chiefs select Malik Washington, wide receiver from Virginia. I think Mal- Malik is a shifty slot receiver with a big catch radius for a small guy at 5'9", 191 pounds. He can win versus press coverage with his physicality. He's unbelievable after the catch. As you see here, man, just watch this. Woo. He's one of the best route runners in this draft class. Like when I mentioned on the show last time, we need a route runner. And I think he's one of those guys I should have mentioned along with Polk and uh, Leggett. But Washington will would complement Rice and Kelsey in an otherwise reliable receiving group and will likely operate in the slot in majority of his snaps. He has the quickness to provide Mahomes with short and intermediate targets with occasionally stretching the defense vertically. There have been only five, four power five players in the past 10 seasons to have 110 plus receptions and 1400 yards receiving. Those guys are Amari Cooper, Justin Jefferson, 
Devontae Smith and Malik Washington. Because of that, Washington takes the ball well over the middle for a guy his size with the route running ability, with the separation potential to make Mahomes comfortable throwing his way and a playing style that fits the Chiefs' route structures. If teams go all out to slow down Kelsey and Rice, Washington has a very realistic shot at piling up numbers to challenge for the offense of rookie of the year from the slide. That is some hefty situations right there, but I liked I liked how how uh Malik Washington was able to um find just the open spirit uh, open field. Like he's able to find the open field no matter what. And uh yes. I think that was amazing. That's amazing for him. And I think with Rasheed Rice he, and also I love his speed. I love his speed. Uh he can he can move. Yes. I'm I'm shocked that you're picking a wide receiver so late, but that just tells you how how crazy this draft class is. Yes, and it's um, deep. It's, it's deep. super deep. Puka it, Puka Nakua was found in the fifth yeah, round. You saw what he yes, did. Like, absolutely, so. absolutely. I, I definitely understand. Tyree Kill, another fifth round guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in Ron St. Brown, a fourth round, fourth fifth round guy. Look, I am here for it. I know a lot of people aren't going to be happy about it because it's not the sex. It's not the sexy pick. However, if you can get a guy, because because you got to understand, they got to mm-hmm. understand Andy Reid too. And that was one of the things I thought Rasheed was going to struggle with at first, but he, yeah. but he figured it out throughout the season, and that's all you really want. Keep building on what you got, and I think. The way I've been seeing, the way I've seen uh, Malik Washington be used, and once you uh, once you start looking at the way he's used over the even just this last season, you can tell that they upped his workload, obviously, and they yeah. put him in different spots. Now, obviously, uh, Andy Reid's gonna make him learn the the X in every position, but I don't think yeah. they're gonna put that on him day one. So, with that being said, there is P Max mock draft 7.0. Yes, sir. And with that, that is the end of our show. Uh, we thank everybody for listening. We thank. We want to make sure we uh, give a shout out to Chiefs Focus, who this is presented by. Uh, we yes. thank Chiefs Focus, and uh, we appreciate everybody for listening. Um, when you all get the chance, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the shows. Uh, Chiefs Focus, uh, we are uh, we're growing. We're yes. gradually expanding. So uh, keep an eye out for our draft coverage and keep an eye out for uh, what we're doing in the future. Uh, with that being said, PMAC, you got anything else? Close us out. All right, uh, like this, said, please uh, like and subscribe to us uh, on uh, Chiefs Focus Live. There's also Chiefs Focus Live and Chiefs Focus on Facebook. There's also Chiefs Focus on Twitter and also Instagram. Uh, look for me, look for you on uh, Twitter, also Facebook, whenever you guys get the chance. But also I want to mention before we go out, um, this is in honor of Autism Acceptance Month. Uh, I was diagnosed with autism when I was age two, and uh, this is an honor to – be a black man with autism to have uh, my very own podcast, but also to do it with my brother over here from another this, and also with my family here at Chiefs Focus. I'm very thankful for this opportunity. And uh, if you guys don't know much more about autism acceptance, I would suggest look up Google and understand what it is, or, you know, look for me. And uh, if you guys want to know what my uh, t- ex Twitter handle is at Chiefs fan, number four, the number four for life, uh, L I F E. So you guys want to look me up there and, uh, I'll be able to give you guys and educate you guys about autism awareness, but also autism acceptance because we're going past awareness. Now we want to be accepted. It's time for acceptance for everybody, especially people who they're identified with, no matter who you are. So, uh, thank you guys. And also shout out to my family at the self advocate coalition of Kansas. After this, um, I'm, um, get ready to head into work after this so thank you guys and uh, thank you this and um that's all i gotta say with that being said with that being said we're out deuces deuces